Hi, my name is Carissa Laffey, and today I'm going to be showing you an activity that will utilize the saltwater wetlands on the Bolivar Habitat Preserve. The Man Who Drew Birds is an activity that's designed for third through fifth grade, and it's best done during the fall. For the Man Who Drew Birds, you will need a sketchbook per student, a set of 24 or 36 color pencils per student, or a watercolor palette, brushes, and a cup of water, and a fine point sharpie per student. Conduct this activity in a comfortable spot near the saltwater wetlands where your students can sit and see lots of different birds. John James Audubon, who in 1827 published the first volume of his extraordinary work, The Birds of America, actually visited Galveston Bay. The date of his visit here was in the spring of 1837. The following are a few excerpts from his notes and journal that document the experiences he had on the Bolivar Peninsula, Galveston Island, and the Bay Area. April 27. We were off at an early hour for the island, two miles distant. We waded nearly all the way, so very shallow and filled with sandbanks in this famous bay. The men set large fires to keep off the mosquitoes, which were an annoying even enough for me. Besides many interesting birds, we found a new species of rattlesnake with double row of fangs on each side of its jaws. April 29th. Hundreds of least terns are breeding on the island of Galveston Bay. Also, on one of these islands, I found eight or ten nests of rosiest spoonbills placed in low cactuses, among hundreds of nests belonging to herons of different species. Snakes are abundant on the island and live in eggs of nesting birds, whence the old name for Galveston Island of Snake Island. May 1st, the muskrat is the only small quadruped found here, and the common house rat has not reached this part of the world. May 5th, hunted birds over the interior of Galveston Island today. While I was watching some marsh hawks that were breeding, I was much surprised to find a large flock of skimmers alighted and apparently asleep on the dry grassy part of the interior. I found broods of the spotted sandpiper or tadler already well grown. When Audubon was a boy, he believed that studying birds and other wildlife in their natural habitats was more interesting and informative than just reading about them in scientific publications. He pioneered a technique essential to the understanding of birds by describing their behaviors and languages in natural settings. He became America's greatest painter of birds by portraying them as they went about their natural activities, building nests, brooding, roosting, feeding their young, fleeing predators, catching prey, or simply striking a beautiful pose. The following activity revisits a time when American naturalists combined biology and art to capture the beauty and complexity found in the natural world. Begin by isolating a particular bird you spot and wish to illustrate. Pay attention to its behavior, the shape of its beak, the structure of its legs and feet. Is it multicolored? Does it have large eyes? Is it feeding? For example, the shape of bird's wings reveals a lot of information about its life ways. Short rounded wings tell you that the bird is an escape artist. It probably lives in woods, bushes, or on the ground where it must be able to take off quickly to avoid enemies. Birds like this are cardinals and sparrows. Wide wings with feathers that spread out like fingers at the ends are clues that the bird is a hunter and a sky rider. Birds like this are eagles, hawks, and vultures. Long skinny wings with sharp looking tips indicate that the bird is a wind surfing sailor. They glide over the water without flapping their wings. Birds like this are gulls and pelicans. 
Some of the fastest flying birds, however, are those with narrow pointed wings that angle back like the wings of a jet. These birds sweep through the sky by flapping their wings quickly and then dive to catch a meal. Birds like this are sandpipers, swifts, and swallows. As you observe your bird with your pencil or pen, sketch only what you see. Don't create a shape that isn't there. Trust your eye. After you've completed your bird sketch, fill in the immediate background with a simple branch, bulrushes, or a post, for example. You don't have to keep an entire landscape or waterscape. Keep your eye on the birdie, so to speak. With your interpreter's help, identify your bird and journal some of your observations directly below your sketch. You are becoming a naturalist. Your students are practicing naturalists and will learn how to draw from real life versus two-dimensional pictures in their imagination. Some of your students might find it challenging to capture an animal as it's moving. Encourage your students to only capture the simple shapes that they see. Some of the birds may be small and be darting across the sky with their wings tucked in. Or they can capture a shape of a large egret with their neck poised to strike at the water. There's so many different wonderful shapes that you can capture. And you can even follow the same bird across the landscape and capture all of the different shapes that it makes. For younger students, it may be challenging for them to capture the birds they see on paper. For grades kindergarten through second grade, visit the Prairie Bird Walk video. For older students, this activity may be appropriate, but it needs to be a little bit more challenging. For grades six through eight, visit the Neotropic Bird Migration video so that your students can create a portrait of their favorite bird species. Close your lesson by stressing the importance of observation in nature. It's a really important skill to have as a young scientist and naturalist. You can also ask your students what they enjoyed about their birding experience and any challenges that they came across while capturing those bird species. You can also ask their students if they saw anything that piqued their interest that they would like to study a little bit more the next time that they go out. Have your students share their sketches with the class. Consider taking your students in the spring to the Smith Oaks Bird Sanctuary. There are many different behaviors that they can witness there, anything from courtship, mating, caring for young, and even feeding behaviors. It's a great opportunity for your students to sketch what they see.